Welcome to another episode of the Be Fearless Podcast. Oh my God, I have to say thank you. Thank you to all the people in Germany, specifically in Berlin, for picking up the podcast this month. Thank you so much for your support, for listening. Also the people in Singapore, Vietnam, Zambia, Africa, and here in the United States. Thank you to Pennsylvania and New Jersey for picking up the podcast this month as well. Thank you. Your support means the world to me. So all I can say is, you know, thank you. A round of applause to you. (laughs) All right. So now. Today's topic is something that I've been kind of like thinking about um, talking like for a while now. And this is the thing. A lot of people out there, if you listen to this podcast, most likely you are looking for motivation. You have an entrepreneurial um, dream or you are already in business and you just want to become a better business owner, become a better entrepreneur, you know, just like you, you're here to unlock your potential, right? So a lot of the things that we do when it comes to say uh, business owners automate, we automate certain things like messages, emails, and a lot of, um, depending on the people, the team that you work with, they will recommend dripping campaigns. Here's the thing with dripping campaigns. Dripping campaigns, uh, and let me explain in a little bit what is a dripping campaign, um, can be a double-edged sword, right? It can definitely help you, but at the same time, it can deter your business or just break your business um, because you have to be very meticulous and careful when you um, are building this this campaigns right so what is the dripping campaign dripping campaign is not only it's not all the thing that for example when you sign up or subscribe to let's say a free gift or a free download out there um and then after you subscribe obviously you're submitting your email address as um you know voluntarily so once you do that you're agreeing to keep receiving um notifications from the vendor that you just sign up for just to get that free gift or that, um, you know, free gift. (laughs) So they start then, they start sending you emails over and over and over again. Sometimes you didn't even sign to or agree to this dripping campaign. The people just adding you to their contact list because you at some point had some sort of relationship with them. But the thing is that you're pushing a message that people, number one, are not either looking for or, you know, it's it's something that, yes, they're interested in your business, but they're not into it because you have not worked that relationship. So while this uh, dripping campaigns have some aspects that can be uh, of some aspect of marketing that can be definitely good. At the same time, they have drawbacks that might deter your clients from engaging in your business. So let's go over some cons uh, of the dripping campaigns. And for me, the number one is, you know, the overwhelm and fatigue, you guys. And I, I've been there. I have felt it too. Okay, uh, I have reach a point that I don't want to support this business. I want to support this individual. But honestly, the dripping campaigns are so, like, <laughs> there's <is> so much <laughs> that it, it is, think of it like when you get an IV, when you, when you go to a hospital and you're plugged into an IV, and then they put the drip like in a full drip or a medium drip, and you're feeling that solution going into your body and then your body is start like getting all this um this you know <laughs> uh, liquid this this solution in and at some point 
it's gonna it's not gonna take it anymore it has to release it right that's why when you plug to an id if they're like in full drip or medium drip or the drip is not controlled to have certain amount of drops per minute you're gonna be on that bathroom like pretty much every 15 30 minutes right um so that's what a dripping campaign does to you when it comes to overwhelm or fatigue. It's going to like, you're going to be tired of seeing the name of the of the individual or the name of the business because they're constantly on your email. And if the, if he, if the message didn't um, reach out your inbox, you probably reach out your other folder or your promotion folder, depending on what email provider you have it's going to reach one of those if it doesn't go if if the provider the email provider doesn't identify it as a uh, scam because you're sending so much email to the individual <laughs> um you know even though you're putting all this effort and sending a message as an entrepreneur or a business owner guess what this system is going to identify okay so we just gonna send this to spam, so or of the junk mail, and your efforts are still like not effective at this point, right? So, but if they reach the the inbox, like I had, it had happened uh, many times to me, um, your clients may feel overwhelmed. I have felt overwhelmed and fatigued by seeing so many emails. Yes, the information might be interesting it might be uh beneficial but at this point in or junction in my life or your client's life is not something that they're looking for so you're not making any progress by actually um by actually you know sending so many emails um it just create a fatigue into your clients um, in, in such short period of time. And this is why they, you know, this can lead to them turning out or unsubscribing from your communications because they they had enough. <laughs> you basically, basically stalking them <laughs> via email. <laughs> the second point that makes this dripping campaigns so, um, so negative for your business is because they become so impersonal, right? Just your clients that start getting this feel that, oh, this is there. Here we go. He comes, this person again or this business again, selling me something or sending me something that I'm not interested in. I'm not looking for it. It's not tailored. When you read, they read the message. It's not tailored to the need. It's not tailored to them. It's not speaking to them because you have not built that relationship with your clients. So what happens then is the dripping campaigns come across as an impersonal, and especially if the message are too generic or not tailored to the recipients, to their specific needs, they're just going to shut you down. So you're basically wasting your time and money on sending this, on sending these systems up, because obviously these automated systems, they cost money um, for the entrepreneur or the business. So you're just like spending money in stuff that people is not actually opening. It's, it's not it's not helping you connect to your client, to your prospect, to your leads. So you come as an impersonal and people hate to be seen as a number. People don't like to be seen as, oh, you just want to sell me something. I'm just a number for you. I'm just another client. I'm just like, you, you definitely, you say you want to help. You say, you know, all this beautiful things, but honestly, what you show with me with the stripping campaigns is some other story. So what happens is usually that people just like unsubscribe and shut you down or block it. <laughs> I have done it. I have blocked people because they have come so, so impersonal and the messages are so many per day that it's insane. It's insane. So if it happens to me, and I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm an, um, a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an outdoor, um, I'm a podcaster, I understand the size of business and marketing. Believe me, 
I can say, then if it happens to me, it happens to many people out there. So what are we doing? <laughs> what is this dripping campaign doing for us? If it's not other than, you know, just having an adverse, you know, effect. Um, so the next thing that this dripping campaigns um, have is the lack of timeliness. Um, with that, basically, is that since these campaigns are usually per schedule, and that's another thing, you per schedule this, you have to kind of like set up your calendar and per schedule all these messages, they might not always align with the real time events that are happening in our community or worldwide, or even, you know, on the client's current needs. So this can make the message seem out of touch or irrelevant to your prospect, to your leads, to the people that you're reaching out. So that's something that definitely um, happens a lot. I have seen a lot. I was like, oh, I don't need this right now. And then I just like delete. Same happened to other people that I have talked to and uh, comments that have, uh, you know, people that have reached out to me. Um, you know, is that it's just out of time. It's not a, It's not coming into your leads on the right time when they need it. And, you know, that definitely um, kind of like gives them like a, you, it provides the client or, or the recipient a view of you that is completely out of touch with them. And you don't want that. You want to be relevant, be a, a person that provides value to your to your clients and just like sending the stripping campaigns, you know, it's just like it it disconnects you instead of connecting you with them. Um now let's move to the next next point that I want to talk about um is risks of spam, which I already mentioned. Um, but this happened when you start like sending a lot of messages and then if you don't manage carefully your campaigns, the dripping campaign can run the rest to being flagged or as a spam by the emails providers, which happens a lot. Um, this can harm your deliver deliverability. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I can't speak. English today. <laughs> um, but it, it does affect the deliverability rates and overall reputation of your business. So because they see you as a spammer, they're not going to take your business seriously. Who wants to work with somebody that just giving you the vibe that, you know, is not honest and is not, you know, in working towards the best interest of you? Um, you're going to close that door, <laughs> right? So it's the same thing when you have all these ripping campaigns and you keep sending them, this system automatically send them to spam. And in you, your client, your recipient will never see them. Um, the next point uh, that, you know, brings a negative connotation to ripping campaigns is the limited interaction, right? Dripping campaigns often follow a set of sequence because you have to set it up in the system. Okay, if this happened, it's like um, a workflow that you have to create, which means that there's limited room for interactions or real time engagement and clients may prefer more immediate and personalized responses. So, you know, instead of sending an email so so often, why don't you just like take the time of creating an email that is more personalized and just send it once a week or once every week and say, hey, listen, I'm working on this and that project. I thought about you. Let me know if this is something that fits your needs. Um, click this link to set up an appointment, a uh, 30 minute consultation, whatever, whatever, or Zoom meeting whatever your preference is, um, so we can go and discuss and how this can help you. Boom. Do you think your client, your recipient, is not going to say, hey, this is great. Yeah, let me start 
<laughs> Mark, you know, pin this this email for follow up or just like click in and and immediately and secure my spot, my thirty minute uh, consultation with with Dagmar or with whoever is out there listening to this podcast, right? And then what's gonna happen? You're going to have somebody interested in what you have to say and what you have to offer because you were honest, you were personable, you offering value, and you are showing genuine, um, honest interest in helping them with their needs, right? So that would also take you off the um, limited interaction um uh, issue with this dripping campaigns. Now, the last point that, um, you know, I just want to kind of like talk about is the potential for unsubscription. The last thing that you want when you have these people providing you their email address, you know, the first time is that they end up unsubscribing from your list. They're saying like, no, I don't want to have nothing to do with this business or this individual because they're just like drowning me in emails that definitely they see me as a number. They just like trying to sell me something all the time. They're not providing anything. I'm sure they don't care about my needs. Let me just unsubscribe, block and delete. The last thing that you want is that, right? Because when clients feel bombarded or uninterested in the content of dripping campaign messages, they are most likely to hit that unsubscribe button, um, leading you or leading to a loss of potential leads or recommendations and referrals, especially in the real estate business where referrals are everything, right? So, Let's talk about some mitigating strategies that can help you not being unsubscribed or banned or said, you know, sent to the spam folder of your contact list. The first one is balancing your frequency. That's the first thing that you want to do. You want to balance the frequency of when you are sending these messages. All right. Um, how to find the sweet spot between staying top of mind and overwhelming your ballot, your audience. So you need to find that sweet spot. Is it, is it good every two weeks? Okay. Is it good once a month, depending on the topic? Um, you know, just twice a week instead of every single day. Uh, just find that sweet spot. Just tr do a trial for 30 days and, and see how people respond by the frequency of what you send in these messages. Would they respond more if you just send that one email every week? Or they, would they respond more if it's twice a week? Or if it's once every two weeks? Or if it's just once a month? Okay, people are there out there working busy um, and when you send something of value, I'm pretty sure that they will definitely make the time to kind of like star or pin that message because they want to follow up with you or they will respond right away to the email that you're sending. So try to find that sweet spot. Do a trial. Do the work. Treat this as a um, scientific experiment, right? And once you're done with your 30 day trial, see how people responded. And then from there, you start balancing the frequency of your messages. Less, the second strategy to um, mitigating the negative, um, negative effects of dripping campaigns is personalization. So make dripping campaigns feel more tailored to individual clients. Take the time to go through your, your list and see how many people on the one subject or topic that you provide value 
you think that, you know, these people might need, personalize the email and send them to them. They'll send the same email to everybody. Just like category, put, place people on their category. Is this just new people that just came in into your circle? Is this people that, you know, seasoned clients of yours? Let's speak to them. Because if you send an email for new people to your seasoned clients, they're going to say, what's she talking about? I've been, I've been with you. She forgot or he forgot that, you know, I've been their client for this 20 years. And they're sending me this email, like, if, if I'm just new here, like, they don't bug me, they don't see me, you know. So to avoid that, just personalize it, make it more relatable. Now, the real-time adaptation strategy. This uh, is more of incorporating flexibility into your campaign to stay relevant. Talk about current events. Talk about events that affect your clientele and what are you doing to help them out, okay? If you're sending an email that is out of place, out of time, have not touched re with reality, believe me, they will notice. They're going to notice. Oh, I noticed. If I noticed, people out there is noticing, you know, just make sure that you are actually adapting to what is the, the real time of what is going out there. Um, that will make you more relatable and uh, you actually will be providing valuable information to your clients or leads. The next strategy is <laughs> avoiding <laughs> or uh, staying out of the spam folder. <laughs> The best practice to ensure your message land in the inbox is, is not to spam people. <laughs> That's why balancing the frequency is so important, okay? Um, so please, 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 please um, try also to remind people of saving the email address from which you are sending um, the messages you know, say, hey, you know, send a message, say, hey, you know, I just want to make sure they receive my messages. Um, make sure to save this email address to your contact list. So my my message, our communication doesn't go to the spam folder. That's another way to kind of like sure, or make sure that you uh, confirm your subscription to our list using this link, blah, blah, blah. And um, there's some automated um, databases or systems um, that actually have that process of confirming subscription. So it helps avoid the spam folder. Um, but also when you balance the frequency of your messages, that also is gonna help you to stay out of it. Um, and then the last strategy is interactive elements, adding elements that encourage clients interaction and feedback, like having a link to, um, you know, I set up that 30 minute consultation, having a link to the product um, that you are promoting or the service that you're promoting, explaining, hey, if you want to know more or learn more about um, this product or service, go to this link that provides all the you know details and then send them there. By doing that, um, the system or the, the messaging, um, the email provider is going to recognize, okay, this is an email or content that uh, the account owner is interested in. Let's keep that out of the spam folder. So by making this also interactive, this also gives you the stats on um, from your end. When you review your stats, it also tells you what content your audience or your your clients, your leads are interested in so you can mine those topics. All right. So so um let's go over a uh case study uh regarding the overwhelm effect. 
I think that's one of the most common um, issues with ripping campaigns. So let's just like see how this individual, you know, deal with this. So a popular, I'm not gonna say the um, the name of the clothing retailer, but uh, they decided to launch a ripping campaign to promote their new sensation uh, seasonal collection, right? And they basically plan a series of emails to show, showcase different items, discounts, and styling tips over the course of two weeks. Here is where things were wrong. While the initial response was positive as the campaign progressed, customers started feeling overwhelmed. Daily emails floated their inboxes, and some even complained of feeling pressure to make purchases they weren't ready for. Unsubscriptions spiked and engagement plummeted. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you don't want people to feel pressure to buy something. I don't like to feel pressure. I, I bet a lot of people here don't like to be pressured to buying something, right? They hate that feeling because yes, they might be interested, they might like it, but when you push people or people feel that way, believe me, it's gonna be a reaction. It's gonna be a big brick wall in front of you in no time because they don't like it. So what they did to kind of like solve the issue and regain the trust of their subscribers was to balance the dripping campaign, balance the frequency. Um, so what it's essential to stay on top of mind, bombarding customers with too many messages in a short period can lead to fatigue, which we already discussed. And the retailer realized that they needed to space out their emails and provide more value added content rather than just sales pitches. And this is the thing, a lot of um, coaching programs are there, um, which Hey, I'm a coach as well. I love um, teaching people. I know I have gone through many of these um, courses where they teach you how to, you know, do sales speeches for your products. Um, but it can be overwhelming. So it, it, if, if it's also overwhelming to you, it can be also overwhelming to your customers. So I think that the key point of balancing frequency in personalizing is also putting yourself into your client's shoes and think how will my customer feel if I send this in this amount of, of time? Is it something that I would like usually? I mean, when you put yourself in your client's shoes, you can definitely see all the different things that can happen and will also help you to um, segment or target the emails in a way that, you know, identify what, what email goes to which group of people and when they will go to this other group of people. And by doing that, you know, this company <laughs> finally get, regained the trust of their customers and subscriptions went back up. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the case studies that I found, uh, very interesting in, um, providing a great, uh, lesson learned and, um, you know, just keep in mind, you know, your clients, your leads are people just like you. Um, we, we, yes, we want to. We want to provide them with all the information, but we also need to do need to know how we do it in and, and do it in an effective way. So if you found that um, this podcast today, this topic was something of value to you, make sure that you share this with your friends. Um, let us know in the comments. What are your thoughts? What have been your experience with dripping campaigns? Um, if it is something is so, something that you have done um, differently to improve dripping campaigns, tell us about it. Share with our community. 
and so we can all, you know, learn and improve the effectiveness of the dripping campaigns. Um, now, I want to leave you with one last thought and is that in today's digital landscape, automation has become a powerful tool for marketers to streamline processes, reach a wider audience and improve efficiency. However, the key to successful marketing lies in striking the right balance between automation and personalization. So, so while you are implementing, you know, these strategies, also keep in mind to um, to have a data driven insight um, and use the data of your um, of your system to collect a vast amount of customer behavior interaction. So that will help you identify what has worked, what changes you have implemented that has worked. And um, this also uses the data, um, using the, the data to create targeted campaigns, improving conversion rates and R ROI uh, through personalization. Uh, when you do this, definitely, um, you know, look into the numbers, to the insights of your campaigns. We'll tell you what people are looking for and will help you avoid overwhelm and, you know, the negative impact of a dripping campaign. Um, I think that basically um, the main point here is that balancing automation uh, with, with personalization is the key to effective modern marketing and it allows businesses to reach a wider audience effect efficiently while it's still providing the tailored human-centered approach that customers crave. So again, if you find this podcast today um, valuable, make sure that you share it with your audience, with your friends, uh, leave your comments, let us know what experiences you have had with dripping campaigns. What are you doing that's working? So people out here can also benefit from uh, your knowledge. And um, also, if you have not done so, go grab to all my authors out there, go grab my latest book, Authorship, which was published back in March 13. And it's Authorship, The Art of Writing Books, Self-Publishing, and Marketing on a Budget is available on Amazon. So go grab your copy. It is a how-to guide to walk you through the full process of becoming a self-published author. Um, this is the result of so many people asking me how I did it. <laughs> How did I publish all my work? So um, I was like, you know, a lot of people cannot pay thousands and thousands of dollars and they're just trying to find a way to um, make some money while sharing their experience and the knowledge. So I thought, you know, just let me just show you how you can do it on a budget. So here it is. Um, beautiful book, great book with tons of information helpful information that will walk you through the full process. Having that said, you guys, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We are basically available every single automated, um, I mean, <laughs> audio platform out there. Um, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, um, Google, you name it. We are out there. So in the meantime, like always, don't forget to unlock your potential and be fearless. Until the next one. Bye.